Today on Getting Real with the Housewives, Rihanna weighs in on Kyle and Morgan's relationship status as Taylor Armstrong claims she and Kyle never dated. Plus, Melissa Gorga mistakes an earthquake for a ghost, Jill Zarin defends her behavior on Below Deck, and Christina Applegate is pissed Robin Dixon may not return to Potomac. And the Countess herself stops by to give an update on her love life. We got that plus so much more in today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey everyone, I'm Christina and welcome to Getting Real with the Housewives. Lots of news today and we sit down with the Countess herself. But before we get to it, let's see what we have to say about last week's show. Daniela says season 13 had the biggest Beverly Hills of viewership season since 2012. The relationship split is a tactic to protect their mutual assets from lawsuits against Mauricio. Of course, talking about Beverly Hills and um, whether or not everybody felt that last season was kind of strange since there were castmates missing, you know, Kyle and Mauricio's breakup. So that's what uh, that viewer had to say. Another one says, Bet could come on to Beverly Hills as a friend. Don't know if she knows Sutton. Bet is a New York icon and Sutton has her own connection to American Ballet Theater, which is based in New York City. I think Bet would be a great addition to Housewives, a friend, cameo, whatever. Just get her on screen. I think it would be great. Somebody else that I think would be great on Beverly Hills is Rihanna. As we know, she is a Housewives super fan who's met Kyle Richards, but she's just as in the dark about what's going on with Morgan Wade. Love this um, interview that she did with Interview Magazine, and she was asked whether she thought Kyle and Morgan were dating. So Rihanna replied, I mean, duh. She went on to admit that she doesn't have any real intel about the twosome. She said, listen. I love Kyle. It's weird commenting on her relationship because I don't know the facts. I just feel like she was able to reobserve her marriage through a new lens. She went on to explain that the dynamic between Morgan and Kyle made her think that the duo were more than friends. She said for once, someone else made her feel valued, made her feel like she was cute and quirky and fun and all the great things that maybe were taken for granted before. And that's why I believe that there's something with Morgan because sometimes it takes that for you to fight for what you deserve. So that is Rihanna's hot take. As we know, she and Kyle met at um, in Aspen when she was there. So, you know, maybe they formed this friendship and this was just her observation, but Either way, I mean, Kyle looks like she's really happy, um, kind of, you know, rediscovering herself and this new chapter of her life. And like we've been saying time and time again for the past few months, it seems like she and Mauricio have kind of put a pause on their relationship for now. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of see it unfold next season on Beverly Hills. So keeping in the Beverly Hills news, Taylor Armstrong and Kyle Richards were never dating. Taylor set the record straight on Twitter after a satirical post began circulating, suggesting that she and um, her co-star, her former co-star dated for five months in 2016. She wrote, this is complete BS. Kyle is like family to me and always has been. I never said this thought this or experienced this, lies, lies, lies. Now the story came from Dorinda Deadly, an account that touts itself as the ultimate fusion of US and UK reality TV and pop culture. The, po the post in question read, Taylor Armstrong confirms to GQ that she dated Kyle Richards for about five months in 2016. She says it to our friends now that she's family no matter what. If you think that language kind of sounds familiar, you're not going crazy, the post was almost a word for word parody of a pop Crave post that confirmed the same news about uh, actress Ch Hunter Schaefer and singer Rosalia. So Dorinda Deadly followed its parody tweet with a link to the original uh, post from Pop Crave, but not before a number of followers earnestly replied to what they thought was real news. So yeah, not true. Fake news. Um, it seems like maybe they were just trying to stir something up and have a little bit of fun. They, maybe they didn't think that people would take it so seriously. But as we know, Housewife fans do take things seriously and will um, follow all this news because, yeah, I mean, that's a headline grabbing a story. I mean, I would click on that. But yes, Taylor set the record straight. She and Kyle were not a thing. So moving on to Christina Applegate, I love this. She needs answers about the future of the Real Housewives of Potomac. She wrote via X, what in the actual F? Why is Robin Dixon not coming back to the Real Housewives of Potomac? No. So in hopes of getting some clarity, she playfully tagged um, Andy Cohen in hopes that he would see the message and shed some light on future casting decisions. She said, Andy, you need to explain this to me. She is my fave housewife of all the franchises. Andy, call me now. You don't have my number, but you know, I love you. So last month, the Jasmine brand reported that Robin was not returning to the show after eight seasons. 
Neither the network or Robin herself have confirmed the report. Yeah, I'm surprised that they haven't kind of either squashed these rumors, confirmed these rumors, because yes, Robin has been a staple of the show for eight seasons. We know Candace isn't coming back. A lot of people were disappointed with how Robin handled the rumors of her marriage and things like that um, after last season. So I would love to know if you think that Robin should come back next season. Now that Candace isn't going to be there, um, if there's anybody from the past that you would like to see come back, let me know if you think that Potomac needs a cast shakeup. Uh, moving on to my favorite story of the week. After a 4.8 magnitude earthquake hit the Northeast on April 5th, many New York and New Jersey residents took to social media to crack jokes or share their collective amazement at the seismic event. Yes, I live in Jersey. It was was a seismic event. It was kind of crazy. So Melissa Gorga had a different experience. She told Entertainment Tonight about her harrowing tale surviving the earthquake from her house. She was in her home gym with her dog, but otherwise alone in the house when her world was literally shaken. She said the house sounded like it was being invaded. It was like shaking, the floor was shaking, I have weights in my hands, and I was like, what is happening? It sounded like my roof was shaking, the floor was shaking, and it really did sound like a stampede. People were running, 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 and I just froze because I get nervous. Ironically, the day an earthquake struck was the one day she left her door unlocked. When she received a notification that her front door had opened, she feared someone or something had invaded, perhaps maybe even something supernatural had come through her front door. She said, I was freaking out a little bit. And as I'm walking back down my basement steps to finish my workout, I'm like, wow, like I've never experienced a ghost before. Like maybe that was a ghost. Well, without the Ghostbusters on speed dial, she felt that 911 was her next best option. She said, I'm screaming, I'm running up the stairs, I have 911 ready to push, so I dialed it on my phone. But it wasn't until her employees at MB and her husband um, gave her a call. She realized it wasn't a ghost, but it was, in fact, an earthquake. Like I said, favorite story of the week. But yes, your ha my house was literally shaking just like uh, Melissa's. I didn't think it was a ghost. I thought it was an earthquake, but definitely something super rare to happen um, of that magnitude around here. But glad everybody is safe and we all survived. So Jill Zarin seemingly clapped back at her critics following her recent appearance on Below Deck. Uh, took to her uh, Instagram, thanking her her, um, her host for an amazing trip. She said we made a great show together, but the summer's trip, but this summer's trip, no cameras. Love you both. So during her time on the yacht, Jill irritated crew members with her countless demands. Stu Barbie Pascal was the first to try and accommodate the former housewife star, but was frustrated behind the scenes. She said, "You are a freeloading guest who is extremely demanding. This is too much for me. I need another Stu just for Jill." In addition to asking for more things on the boat, Jill also gave the crew some tips on how to manage the ship better, from their bathroom amenities to their dining service. Do we expect anything less from Jill? She said, can I give you another recommendation for the yacht? I had this on mine, a button for the primary, and it is like a doorbell. I used to have a doorbell, and it would go up to the kitchen. I mean, are, like we said, are we really surprised about this being from Jill Zarin? I think she brought her own ice or something like that as well. I mean, it made for great TV. Probably not a fun uh, charter guest, but did make for great TV. Well, speaking of New York, we caught up with the one and only Luanne De Lesseps, who said this was the year she was manifesting love. So how is that going for her? Well, we had to find out. You said that this year you were manifesting love for yourself. Yes. You know, we're a few months in. How's that going? Pretty well. Yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, I've been dating where I had kind of a dry spell, I have okay. to say. And um, things have kind of turned around. Okay. So I'm dating. There's nobody that, you know, I want to introduce to my kids. I'm just dating and having fun. Okay. You know, because I'm working a lot, traveling a lot. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard. And, you know, TVs, are, you know, um, can be difficult mm -hmm. also. You know, and reality tells you, oh, my God, Dorinda just texted me. She ran into Jacques. Oh, really? Oh, he no. is so <laughs> handsome. <laughs> and, you know, Jacques and I are really tight. Are you? We're, yeah, we're really, mm -hmm. really good friends. Yeah. You know, when we broke up, actually, he said, you know, our friendship is good. our friendship is going to last a lifetime. Interesting. You know, much longer than a relationship. Might yeah. Last, you know, so we had a really smooth ending, and and we're still friends. Still friends. Mm -hmm. Never thought about getting back together. No. No. Well, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> and then I was like. <laughs> And then I met, you know, then I met Tom. So yeah, then the, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were. I want you to clear up some rumors because there were some headlines going around of you out maybe on a date with Mary Kate Olson's ex. Is that true? Well, we went out to lunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was it fun? It was fun. It was fun. It okay. was fun. I, I've known him for a while. You've known him for a while. Yeah, so it's kind of 
More of a friendship. More of a friendship. Mm -hmm. Is it hard, like, when you go out with somebody, though, because everybody is like, okay, now that's who you're dating? Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because we were talking about how, you know, paparazzi and things like that at mm -hmm. lunch and how, you know, he, he's a very quiet, sure. you know, guy who likes um, his, you know, um, who, who likes to be private. Sure. So, um, and then we walk out the door. And, and then there's the paparazzi. <laughs> I mean, you can't catch a break. Right, you can't catch a break. Well, you know, if you're on Madison Avenue, at Bill Bouquet, that happens. Sure, guess, that happens. Right? And then, you know, then the rumors about Joe Bradley. Oh my what God! What happened with Joe? Uh, Set the record straight, Luann. <laughs> well, listen, uh, we, you know, we got along very well. We yeah. had a good chemistry together, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. And but you know, Danielle was there. She was there at the show. She was there when we went out later for sure. drinks at the hotel. Um, and you know, and she said that you know she tracked him on his phone, and he did come over with friends for drinks at okay. my house. Okay. Um, but that was it. That was it. Yeah. Nothing more. Nothing more. Nothing more. Okay, because it seems like he alluded to something more. <laughs> <laughs> well, they certainly did. Yeah. As cast because it came up at the because reunion. came up at the reunion. Yeah, exactly. Were you, did you kind of call him out on that for? Well, no, 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 no. I haven't spoken to Joe since then. Okay, really, since you know, then. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, like, he's a little young for me, too. Little... <laughs> Always love catching up with Luann. All right, well, let's get into our social spotlight of the week and definitely taking a turn, some really sad news. The Real Housewives of Orange County alum Lori Peterson is mourning the death of her son, Joshua Michael Waring. He was only 35, so she posted this on Instagram. She said, it is with a shattered heart that I write this post to let you know that my sweet Josh left this earth Easter Sunday. She said, no one can ever prepare you for this. Feeling of such deep loss, every fiber in my body hurts. Josh fought every single day for most of his adult life for his life, but this past Sunday, the challenge was too great. Now, he was survived by his parents, Lori and George Peterson, his sisters, Ashley and Sophie, and his daughter, Kennedy, who was born in 2012. Um, Lori adopted Kennedy in 2015, and according to Lori, he struggled with substance abuse disorder before his untimely death. Um, so our hearts and thoughts go out to Lori and her family during this incredibly difficult time. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Always love to see your comments, so please keep commenting, keep subscribing, and we'll see you next week.